lighting people, if you're a design services firm providing architectural lighting design services, or if you're another type of lighting business, selling lighting or in controls products to wholesalers, distributors, contractors, or end users, this whole lighting industry biosphere is fueled by this interwoven mesh of transactions, business to business transactions. So we thought it'd be a good idea to catch up with the founder of a leading B2B marketing services firm, Fusion Advisory, to learn more about how the practice of B2B marketing and sales is changing and shifting and how we can be better at it. So we're pleased today to be joined by Mike Swigert, who also has eight years of lighting industry experience in various business development roles in the commercial circles. So Mike, hello, and thank you for joining us today for five big questions. Well, Al, thank you so much for having me. And I hope I can bring at least a, a smidge of value to your audience. No, I'm sure you will. And uh, we like having a guest like you who's not in the lighting industry, drinking our own Kool-Aid all the time, but you're certainly very familiar with, with the time you spent in the lighting industry. So when you look at things now from your perspective in more B2B marketing sense, what are some of the observations you have about the lighting industry and what we could be doing perhaps uh, differently or better to promote our, our brands and services? Well, I think I think one of the biggest things that that a lot of people in this industry are seeing is, you know, where how is the supply chain really going to be impacted as as we're changing this world from manufacturer distributor to reps to, you know, there's all these different parts and pieces. But one thing that's always important is how do we bring value to a decision maker, right? If you're really really recognizing, it, maybe your manufacturer, maybe your reps are the the decision maker, your rep, and maybe your specifiers are the decision maker. Maybe the specifier is always a decision maker, no matter where you stand. And as long as you are consistently recognizing, building that database and generating content to bring value to that decision maker, you are positioning yourself better than probably most of your competition. No, it makes sense. And I, I want to ask you more about that content piece a little later, but let's start first with, uh, with, with, with something, something else related to what you just said. And that is um, using email as a tool. Um, while I was eating nine meals a day during the pandemic in 2020, you actually did something way more productive and launched not one, but two books. One of them is called Great at Email. And in that book, you stress the importance of using what's called a drip campaign. Now, some people in lighting might scoff at such a notion because, well, you know, this is the lighting industry, it's a relationship business, and I'm just going to keep building relationships like I always have. Um, but tell us why perhaps we should consider um, using email differently or better in, in some sort of drip campaign like you suggest. Well, I, if you think about a drip campaign, in this world that we live in, Al, I encounter so many amazing, amazing salespeople that whether they're at a trade show or a networking event or just, you know, talking to a, a key client, they actually do things amazingly well. I want to walk up and they want to say, hey, Al, you know, how are you doing? How are you liking the trade show? Or, hey, you know what? How often have you been a part of BOMA or Cornet or IFMA or whatever the group is? Hey, what value do you find in IFMA? Who do you really enjoy talking? You know, like these are conversations, real conversations that you should be having as a salesperson when it's person to person. And then all of a sudden people think they're doing something on email or, or, or a LinkedIn outreach and they're like, hey, uh, my name is Mike, buy my stuff. Hey, and it's like, wait, you just skipped a lot of steps there, right? There's so many steps. So when we think specifically about a drip campaign, kind of mirror that with steps you would do in human interaction and do it genuinely. And you know what? If you ask the client or a prospect a question and you learn something and you never pitch them, that's you're doing it right you're doing things the right way, right? If you actually then start your, when I say drip campaigns, I wanna talk about like maybe an interest campaign or a conversation starter. If you think about it that way, as opposed to a uh, um, bombardment of, of just sales pitches, that's not what a drip campaign is. A drip campaign is starting conversations with your ideal client. Makes sense. And when you talk about bombardment um, as a social media user, I see a lot of that on social media. And the other book you wrote last year and published was called Great at LinkedIn. So let's talk about that and how lighting people might be able to use LinkedIn better to promote their brand or product. I love this. I, I, I've seen LinkedIn evolve so much the last 18 months. Even when I started writing my book, what 
a lot of things that I started thinking about, even when I started putting my book together, didn't even make it to the book because it was obsolete. And even now my book was published March of last year. So it's about 15 months out. And I probably say 20, 30% of it is obsolete. But in general, where you start when it comes to LinkedIn, if you think about it as your personal brand page, if you're a salesperson, now I'm not talking about your company pages. Generally, companies do a great job with their corporate pages. They have nice pictures. They've got great portfolio pieces. They do, they do things well. But when you're actually uh, a sales leader, a vice president, a, uh, any sort of leader of the company, think about it being like your personal landing page to create curiosity. Curiosity in you, curiosity in your brand. Because where does that really sit in your sales funnel? It's actually probably like stage two or three. Stage one was that outreach. You've got them to your landing page. What are they really going to walk away from when they get to your landing page, right? Are they going to find out who you are and what problem you solve? Or are they just going to find out that you're the VP of sales at XYZ Corporation? Because if you're starting to talk about problems that you solve and you're getting it in the first 10 seconds when you land on your LinkedIn page, that's the place to start. 100% start there. And look at the key people in your company too. See if you can't help them. Maybe some person's good at it. And maybe you can, you know, through osmosis, kind of get it through the company where other people can learn from that person so that the brand is consistently flowing throughout your leadership. No, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. A lot of, a lot of good nuggets that you shared there, particularly the one about, about solving a problem. Sometimes we're so eager to, to share something great about our company that we don't frame it in a way that, that the person wants to hear about their problem that it solves, rather how great our product or service is. So lots of, lots of good wisdom there. So once we've gotten to the point where we've um, you know, attracted our, our uh, stable of, of, of customers, what are, what are some strategies we can do to maintain those relationships and, and do it in using some of these B2B marketing techniques? You know, we, we, help, we help clients all over the country and they're regularly you know, second and third generation companies. You know, we, do, we do lighting, lighting manufacturers, movers, flooring, uh, furniture. Like we're talking to these guys all the time. And one thing most companies are horrible at is nurturing, right? You've, you've done this great job. You did this outreach. You got this job with a specifier. They spec your product. They used it. They actually held specification throughout from start to punch, right? Everything made it. And then you just forget about them. And it's like, well, no, don't do that. You need to appreciate them and you need to love them. They, they invested, they risked their, maybe not their career, but they risked a little bit of their, uh, their, their company collateral in trusting you on the job. Well, think about what are you doing on a consistent base to maybe help them do their job better? Maybe you're helping them understand the industry better. And that's where doing a nurture campaign, even if it's only once a month, we actually like two times a month, uh, industry insights, right? It doesn't have to be really overthought, but if you're, whether it be a specifier or a, or a real estate manager or a facility director, or a, maybe a, even a, a rep at a design firm or, or at a, a, a rep agency, when you're in that position, be thinking about how do I touch them and give them value on a consistent basis. Guys, I'm going to go a little bit quick into like marketing 201, but like when you think about, everybody thinks about um, recency, right? You regularly think about the last person that brought you value when you're engaging for your next project. The last person, that's recency, right? So what is that? And, it, you know, 25 years ago, it was, the la it was that car ad you saw on the back of the newspaper from the Nissan dealership. And you go, you know what? I'm buying a Nissan, right? Well, wouldn't that be cool if the last newsletter they got was from your your brand and they thought, you know what, I'm calling that brand. The other one is reciprocity. And in this world, if you can genuinely manage your marketing around the world of reciprocity, you'll win because these, there's a lot of other yahoos out there just doing all these straight to call to action. And reciprocity is what I was kind of touching on earlier. Are you bringing value? Are you giving them resources to help them do better at their job and look better at their boss, even when they don't have a project? Do this. Do this, bring value to a very large audience of people that you love to serve, and then just keep doing it. 
Makes sense. Yeah, you don't want to be that guy that shows up only when there's business to be had. So that's uh, uh, excellent advice on the nurturing side of things. And earlier you'd mentioned something along the lines of content marketing. Lots of companies are shifting more and more of their budgets towards content marketing. Uh, what are your thoughts on the strategy? I think I think it's nice, and it's really evolving very quickly. And you know, 2020 impacted the world a lot. And what we're seeing is people want they don't want contrived Al. They really don't want contrived. If you're spending $80,000 for your photo shoot to get that perfect picture to post on LinkedIn, you have wasted $79,995. You really have. Because what people want is, I know it's cliche, I'm going to say the word, it's authenticity. It's a, it's a really, it's, I want to use the word the way it's supposed to be, right? What people want is, hey, you know what? You just finished up a job. And you're like, I love the way my lights look in this cafe. I'm so happy with the way they look. And I want to share this with other designers because they could be like, oh my gosh, I never thought about doing that. Never thought about staggering them. I never thought about running them. I never thought about that spacing. I never thought about using those colors. And if you're thinking about it that way, going like, I want to share this as an idea starter for people on LinkedIn. If that's how you're doing your posts, that, that will position you so well, at least, and I know we don't want to time span too much, but the last two quarters of 2021, if you're putting out idea starters that are really authentic, taken on an iPhone or, or a, a, an Android phone, whatever you're doing, get the picture and get it out. Don't overthink it. Share it. Mike Swagger, I learned something every time, every time I hear you talk about these strategies. It's exciting to catch up with you. I wish I had 20 big questions to ask, but our time is up. I know you got to run, but hey, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I listen and download religiously to the Office Marketing Podcast. Love what you folks are doing. And uh, if you want to get in touch with Mike, his contact information is below this video. So Mike, thank you for joining us today for five big questions. Always a blast, Al. Call me anytime, brother. Hey there, we really enjoyed that discussion. We hope that you did as well. Be sure to click that big LED logo next to me. And what that'll do is subscribe you to our YouTube channel so you don't miss the next five big questions interview. And YouTube subscribers always receive an early preview to the next interview before we even post it on the Inside Lighting website. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.